Hi, everyone. Uh, first off, I would like to thank the conference committee for having me at No Time to Wait this year and for putting together such a great program. I am grateful to have gotten to come and learn about everybody's work and to share a little bit about what is new at NYPL's, the New York Public Library's Audio and Moving Image Preservation Initiative. Um, one of my main roles at NYPL as the Media Preservation Coordinator is to support specification and workflow development for mass digitization of audiovisual media, which we've been doing since about 2016, um, working with multiple vendors in the US. And up until now, we've been working mainly with magnetic and optical media collections, but we finally began preparing for film and we're about to send out our first batch of film this month, um, and we expect to eventually digitize the majority of our film holdings, which we estimate totals to about 20,000 elements. Um, in our lead up to film digitization last year, we carried out a small pilot project in which we sent out a set of similar film elements to three different vendors and gave them all the same specifications for deliverables. Um, we wanted to compare and contrast a few different spec options, uh, DPX, FFV1 MKV, ProRes, H.264, 10-bit versus 16-bit, 2K versus 4K, et cetera. Um, the long story short is that we were already leaning towards FFV1 MKV, and during the review process, we realized that we were putting a lot of trust into our vendors to carry out the encoding perfectly, um, considering that we were not planning on receiving the DPX files as the deliverable. Uh, we love our vendors, but uh, with the high volume of files that we're expecting, we were concerned about putting all of our eggs in one basket, um, and especially that's because digitization of film is so much more costly than uh, a digitization of magnetic and optical media. Luckily though, Rock Cooked was on the horizon, and once it was released, we were able to talk more about our concerns and propose sponsoring some development on new features that would help us and our vendors more easily and quickly verify the reversibility of our Rock Cooked MKVs. Our team's internal campaign for sponsorship of open source software required a lot of serious advocacy and research, and I think that this is important to underline here, and it's something that people have said a lot um, these last, past two days and at every no time to wait, um, and that's just that if you're planning on using or if you're using open source software, it's really important to uh, be engaged in its in, in development, and if you're in a position or if you work for an organization that is in the position to contribute in a larger way, um, you can not only serve your own organization, but also the needs of others. Um, so that's what I think being part of this community is all about, uh, working together for the shared goal of preservation. And speaking of working together um, and sharing knowledge, um, I think it's also worth noting here that almost simultaneously, while we were trying to figure out how to sponsor these features, Kieran O'Leary um, shared some notes on his in-house verification process at IFI. Um, for addressing many of the same concerns that we had. So um, our situation was a little bit different than his, but um, this was just another confirmation that we weren't crazy for wanting some more quality assurance measures in place. So thank you, Kieran, um, and your blog is awesome. Um, so anyways, just to summarize, uh, these are the features that we sponsored at NYPL, um, the DPX implement implementation checker, the integrated lostnesses verification, and the addition of basic error correction mechanisms. Um, and I should reiterate that these things are not live, they're still works in progress, um, but we're really looking forward to integrating them into our workflow, and we're truly grateful to Media Area and to Jerome and Dave for all the work that they've put into fielding all of our weird questions. Um, and Jerome already outlined a lot of these features yesterday, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about them, um, but they'll essentially make the encoding process more trustworthy for us um, and provide us with a streamlined way to check reversibility, um, which is one of the most important parts of our overall quality control workflow going forward with film. So this is where we talk about learning opportunities. Um, we've gotten the chance to check some of these features out a bit, and our first round of tests, we started to realize um, that we didn't quite know as much about DPX files as we thought we did, and, um, but we were learning a lot. So most notably, or perhaps uh, least notably, considering the conclusions that we drew at the end, uh, we ran into some non-conforming ditto key issues. Um, these messages that were uh, coming up when we were working with some of our older DPX sequences and some of the pilot files that we got um, during the project earlier on. Um, so we learned that the SMPTE spec and FAGD recommendations are kind of vague when it comes to ditto key, 
and its usage seems um, somewhat inconsistent, which explains um, why we had this sort of unknown value in some of our files. Um, but this is a pretty minor issue, um, and ultimately it was disregarded. But on the plus side, Ben made this amazing meme, and um, unknown ditto key values are allowed now, um, so it's all good. Um, but I'd really love to hear from anybody else who's dealt with this issue or encountered it or is in the process of uh, transcoding or rock cooking old DPX sequences. Um, I think it would be really interesting to learn about more. Um, so aside from that, um, things are looking pretty rosy for us in the film QC uh, and film digitization front. Um, when our vendors begin in earnest, we can simply request that they use these new um, raw cooked options, um, and those will initiate a set of cross-checking uh, and assurance procedures. And when we receive the deliverables, we'll do a reversibility check in addition to all of our current automated QC steps, which include checking metadata, fixity, signal levels, um, watching the mezzanine and access copies, um, and looking for other errors or bad captures. Um, so as far as challenges go, we're still figuring out how best to perform automated processes on uh, files that have different specifications due to the like, wide variety of uh, film, physical film uh, elements that we're dealing with. Um, and since we haven't gotten a chance to test our workflow at scale yet, um, we'll probably also be dealing with time, time management and processing power. So those are just some issues that we'll, uh, we assume that we'll have to address uh, going forward. Um, but we are very excited to begin this project. And before I end, I just have to say thanks to everyone who helped with us and um, who has been involved in our specification development process, including our vendors um, and everybody that we've emailed. Um, our specifications are live on GitHub, so here's the link. And we always welcome feedback. Um, and thank you. And um, you can take questions now. Uh, we have a couple minutes for questions. So I'm wondering why DPX? What? Why DPX as a destination? I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I mean, understand your question. Um, you're just, you're moving in the direction. Oh no no no! We're no. we're raw cooking our DPX. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Stephen from the BFI. We're, we're rock cooking too. As we speak, we're rock cooking quite a lot of DPXs. And we found something that we, maybe we're the only people who allow it. So I just wanted to check. We, we, the tool has an expectation, or various tools have an expectation of continuous DPX numbers in mm -hmm. your sequence. However, we get suppliers who, who create retries and rescans, and we choose to you know, allow breaks in the sequence mm. pragmatically, and we, we're cooking those, and we're working with Jerome to optimize the, the options for that, but I just wondered, do you expect continuous sequence, and do you reject your DPX if it, if it has breaks? Yeah, part of our specifications um, requires that the sequence be continuous, but, you know, we haven't uh, embarked on the process yet, so it could be that we might encounter breaks in the sequence just due to necessities for working with different elements that need to be put together. Um, I don't know if that's something, like, that's part of your context, possibly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I'll just add that to the list of things we'll have to deal with. <laughs> you about yeah, for sure. Give me that, Steve. Um, so hi, this is Kate Murray um, from the Library of Congress, and I'll just a quick clarification about those FAGI guidelines. So they're um, guidelines about embedded metadata in DPX. So we wouldn't cover the ditto key, but um, I'm it's sure. in there though. Well, it's in there, but we yeah. we wouldn't like we sure we wouldn't say yeah, much about yeah. it. But um, I would say if the, if there's some clarity that we can send back to Simti for their because mm -hmm. they're redoing the 268 uh, ST268 for HDR DPX HDR. We could try. I mean, they, they may not be success, but, but we yeah. could try. That'd be great. I mean, I think that part of this is um, part of learning about what we didn't know about DPX was like not even knowing how to ask the question. So, like, this has sort of like started that, like, what? Now we don't know. Like, this is something that we didn't really know about. Like, how do we even ask them to fix it if we don't know about it? So, like, I would love to hear more about even just like the language that people use to, like, I don't know, to, to, to formulate questions and like recommendations for additions to things like that. Anybody else? 
All right, thank you. Thank you, Genevieve. And we'll welcome our next presenters. <laughs>